line that connects a PC to PT is called the long cord. All right. Now this equation down here gives you the relationship between long cord, radius, and I. What's I again? You got it. The intersection angle. All right. Here on page 12, we are talking about the relationship between the following parameters. Look at the sketch. What I'm highlighting here is called, well, we refer to it as E. But please write down the words external distance. So E, capital E, stands for external distance. And it is the distance between the PI, which I will talk about in just a second, PI. So the distance between the PI and the center of the circle, midpoint of the circle. Uh, I said circle, this circular curve. Now let's get back to the po uh, the, this uh, uh, term that I used, PI. Please write it down. PI stands for the point of intersection. Point of intersection, and that is where the two, uh, two tangent lines intersect. Now, the three equations in the bottom of this page give us a relationship between the external distance, E, and T, which is the tangent distance. I don't think I mentioned that before, but please note, and this is very, very important, guys, the distance between the PC and the PI, we have defined that as the back tangent, but that distance we refer to as T, capital T, and that's in this equation down here. And of course, I repeat the first equation. E is equal to T times tangent of I over 4. Let's assume that they ask you to find the external tangent for a given curve. If you know the tangent distance, capital T, and if you know the intersection angle, I, then you can substitute it in here and find the external angle. Uh, I said the external angle, which I made a mistake. It's external distance. All right? Now, there are two other equations on this page, and these other two equations you can use, depending on what the known values are, you can choose one of these other. Actually, you can choose any of these three uh, equations based on what the known values are to find the external distance e. I have, an exam uh, I have some example problems that will demonstrate this to us uh, in, uh, in a few slides. All right, continuing with these uh, curve equations, the next one relates, look at the sketch here, what I'm highlighting in red. We refer to as that distance as M, capital M. And that is called middle ordinate. Middle ordinate. Write it down. And that is the straight line that connects the midpoint of the curve to the midpoint of what we call long cord. Does everybody see that? All right. So if they ask you to calculate the middle ordinate for a curve, you either are given the radius, or you can somehow calculate the radius, somehow calculate the intersection angle, or that may be given to you. So make a substitution and come up with the value of M. All right? Now, this is the last equation we are looking at. And this is a very, very important equation because no matter what the problem is and what they ask you to do, more than likely, you have to use this equation first before you use another one. All right? So 
pay very close attention to this. This gives you a relationship between L, and L represents the length of the curve, curve length. All right, make a note of it. Just the letter L, capital L, is the length of the curve, and that is related to I, intersection angle, and D, degree of curvature, through this equation. So L is equal to 100 times I divided by D. Now, both I and D, those are angles, and they are in terms of degrees. Um, Paul is asking something, uh, a question about the external distance. Um, yeah, uh, what you're saying, Paul, is correct. Uh, e, the external distance, is the distance between the PI and the midpoint on the curve. All right. Uh, let's take a look at page 15. Here, what I've done for you guys is to summarize the equations that we just re reviewed. And I have had feedback from uh, other folks like you who took this review exam, uh, this review for the exam. And after the, and after the, uh, they took the exam, um, one of the feedback one person made one year was that slide number 19 was most helpful on the test. Of course, uh, you know, every semester, every time, uh, we, we update and re revise these presentations. So uh, what, what she referred to as equal, uh, uh, slide number 19 is now number 15. So uh, basically what she was saying was, the slide that summarized all the equations, she, she found very, very helpful uh, on the test. And, what I, and, and I totally agree. What I need for you, all of you to do, please, is to tag this page. This page number 15, tag this, because uh, for the rest of the presentation today, we're going to come back to it and re <clears throat> review it. Not so much review it, but, but I would n uh, need for you to uh, refer to it when we get to do uh, actual problems. Because today, you're going to do a lot of problems uh, along with me. All right? So um, w the, the way it works, you look at the, the problem, you look at the, uh, the values that are given to you, and then Note what they're asking for you to find. And then you go through this menu of uh, equations. I refer to this slide 15 as a menu of equations that are, that are available to you. And uh, you choose the one that contains the known values and the one that you're solving for. And I'll demonstrate exact, exactly how that works. All right? And you can do the exact same thing on the day of the test. All right? Before we, we uh, go forward, I want to point out a common mistake. A common mistake A common mistake um, is uh, thinking, and please make make a note of it. This is a common mistake. People think that LC is the length of the curve. Well, it is not. Make a note that if you're calculating for the length of the curve, this is the equation that applies. L. L is the length of the curve, all right? This is a very common mistake, all right? So LC, what does LC stand for? Who can tell me? Long cord, long cord, all right? So make sure that you don't make that mistake. 
the other thing, let me tell you about the units. Every angle that you see anywhere on this slide, they are in, in the units of um, degrees. All right? And uh, something that I want you to uh, pay attention to is your equation um, and, and your calculator. Many of the calculators that you use, they have a uh, internal um, function where you can set that the, the angles are always either in degrees or in radians. Please make sure, and this is very important, please make sure if, if your calculator has that feature, when you're doing these kinds of problems on the test, make sure that it is set on degrees. Um, I know uh, one individual um, did not pay attention to this, and uh, the exam on the exam, the, the internal function of, of his, uh, it, uh, his calculator was set on radians. So he, he treated all of these angles in radians. And what happens, the answer that you get seems reasonable, but it is wrong. It is in radians. So make sure that doesn't happen to you. All right? Um, a couple of you are asking about... Uh, um, the angle D. D stands for the degree of curvature. And as I said before, I will define it for you uh, in just a second or two. All right? Uh, also, Jeremiah is asking, what does E stand for? It stands for uh, external distance. External distance. And FAMI is saying, why uh, are there two equations to calculate E? Actually, uh, I gave you three equations to calculate E. Um, uh, just, uh, uh, just the relationships work that way. That's, there's, there is no uh, magic about it. All right, those of you, uh, uh, including Amber, that asked, that asked to, uh, uh, what is the degree of curvature, or where is that angle? Here's your answer. All right, Amber? The degree of curvature on the chord basis. And someone else, I don't remember the name, someone, someone else earlier asked, what is the difference between the chord basis and the arc basis? I'm answering that question now, all right? So two things. This slide is very important. It answers two things. First, what is a degree of curvature? And what's the difference between the chord basis and the arc basis? So please pay attention, because I know this is a question that many of you have. So first of all, degree of curvature on the chord basis is simply it's defined as the central angle subtended by a chord of 100 feet. Think about that. Think about what I just said. The degree of curvature is defined as the central angle, meaning At the center of the circle, remember I told you that th this is part of a circle, so it has a center. So at the center, that's called a central angle. So the central angle that subtends a chord that is 100 feet, whatever that angle happens to be for a given curve, that is defined as the degree of curvature on the chord basis. At the very bottom of this equation, I have repeated the equation that gives the relationship between the radius and the degree of curvature in, in the terms of chord basis. Now let's move on. Uh, slide number 17. 